Okay, welcome to Monday Night Chat episode 65. Uh, I'm shooting this a bit early on Thursday so that I have to so that I have time to go to the uh, funeral of my second grandmother in Ipoh. Uh, we're going to do as usual a Policy Monday. So we're back from Parliament this week in Parliament to Policy Monday now. And then we're going to talk a little bit about cost of living based on the World Bank report. Then answer the five questions and I'll leave the last part to the interns what they want to do. Okay, Policy Monday this week, we're going back to the basic issues about cost of living and cost of living is of course tied to basically minimum wage issues or at least wage issues. Now, uh, what triggered it is was basically on Monday I went to the World Bank uh, announcement uh, on, the, on uh, the Malaysian Economic Monitor which is basically this but they have an interesting section called Making Ends Meet as part 2 so they give you basically the, back, the, the big macro picture and then they had an entire segment on making ends meet, which is really a cost of living issue. Uh, as you know, the economy is humming along, not very exciting, confidence level is very low because nobody wants to invest, nobody knows when the handover of the power will be to Anwar, uh, nobody knows whether all these rumors of you know political intrigue and maybe a backdoor government, all these are spooking the investment community. Um, but broadly speaking, we're also facing a lot of external headwinds from uh, slowdown in global trade, stuff like that. Yeah. So let's just go straight to the point of the World Bank report on cost of living. Now, cost of living is has two components. One is wages are not high enough, and then cost of living is high, wages are low. So what you have is then this double whammy unhappiness in, in the people. Yeah, and this affects roughly our estimation impact negatively about 40% of the population. I mean, that's quite serious. I mean, most middle-class people are affected but not, not terribly unhappy about it, okay? Now, government inflation numbers are relatively low and I don't think they're fudging it. But of course, what, what really happens is they put a lot of goods in a basket and they try to calculate that. One important factor is the cost of food is actually higher. So as a result, if you are the bottom 40, you will definitely feel the pain about uh, cost of living. So how do you deal with cost of living? This office is a policy office. We're working very closely of late with Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, uh, you know, to, to write all these policies out. And one of the core concerns about, uh, about cost of living is trying to bring down the cost of goods, right? So first, uh, a simple policy is to pursue, or at least rethink about the whole AP system, approved permit. Approved permit applies for cars and 5,000 items. You'll be surprised, you know. So, no, of course, the items are in different categories. I think easily, as a policy, we can eliminate up to 90% of the APs uh, over a period, say about two or three year phased out period. Because you can't really phase out immediately. You have to make sure that the market uh, builds an ecosystem to support new competitive environment, right? An AP is, is, should be frowned upon if it is rent seeking in nature, but if the AP is to design to, uh, to diversify the, the supply chain and that these people have APs actually reinvest the money for real things instead of buying a house in London, then okay, we can talk, right? But the most important thing is really monopolies. Monopolies have to go. Monopolies in, uh, in rice, sugar, sugar have dual monopoly, one in for the, for the uh, Borneo states, one for the Malaya states. Uh, control items all these need to really uh, be eliminated uh, as soon as possible because monopoly is just nonsense if we have 30 million people in malaysia if i have a market size of 1 million and of, of rice eaters or people that consume rice and everybody consume rice in malaysia why not have 30 companies competing in the market rather than one single company controlled by a tycoon for rice yeah so you get the idea so if you tackle monopolies you tackle aps you should bring down the cost of living subsidies which is supposed to alleviate cost of living needs to be much more targeted and much more refined uh you know in the pac we sat down and looked at the lpg gas subsidy we found out 600 million is lost through smuggling through uh, usage by commercial purposes so tightening up subsidies can be good and it can result in in your know, excess money which you can then channel to conditional handouts right to help uh, the world bank report also looked at the issue of housing now i think housing is of course is necessary for low cost uh, low low earning people 
but it is really expensive because we did, on on average we need to subsidize about thirty to forty thousand per household in order for them to acquire a low cost house. And low cost houses, if they're designed badly, causes so much more problem, crime, slums, and so on and so forth. So I think, in terms of cost of living, let's tackle the big issues about pricing alone, monopolies, AP subsidies, all that kind of thing. And then only look at housing as a longer term, more expensive solution, right? Uh, another factor about cost of living is clearly the weak ringgit. If the ringgit, if the ringgit is weak, uh, goods coming into the country, and we consume about, of all the goods in Malaysia, we consume about 70 to 80 percent, right? So if they are coming in weak and the ringgit is weak, we are looking at, you know, expensive cost of living. So what we really need to do is to make sure that we uh, strengthen the ringgit and that, to do that is quite simple. Stop money flowing out. Stop money flowing out means people who have money have to invest in the country rather than take it out. And investing in country means we need a clear timeline on the political landscape, the handover, uh, what are the policies, the reform policies we need to carry out. All those are the real confidence booster needed. Now, let's do the last issue about wages. Maybe we should do this on a separate agenda, a separate Monday night chat. But all we have to do is increase minimum wage with a co-pay system that I wrote four years ago and keep refining every year, which the uh, Pakistan government seems very reluctant to do so because they are pro-business. Let me tell you this, the only thing keeping the economy up at the moment is really domestic consumption. And domestic consumption it's about wages. If you pay people too low, consumption is low. It doesn't help the business economy, right? It doesn't help anybody. So increasing minimum wage is an essential tool to boost domestic consumption, at least keep us from avoiding a total recession next year. Okay, that's about it. I'll talk about minimum wage as promised next week in greater detail. Uh, what we really need to do also, and, and this is the last point, the World Bank report notes that we need to have social safety net. Now, a lot of people out there think that the poor are useless, they don't know how to, to fend for themselves. It's not true. The, the poor people need a boost. You know, they need lower cost of living, they need higher wages. Now, but there is a 2% a, a band, the bottom, bottom 2%, that actually do need help. They are either disabled, lost their job, drug addicts, or whatever it is. They just cannot get the job they need and they cannot hold on to that. That we need to do. We're providing welfare aid to about 350,000 uh, people and families. I think that number is much higher. It's probably double that. So we need to focus on differentiating between absolute poor and relative poor. Relative poor as some empowerment programs, better wages, lower cost of living. Absolute poor, we really have to do much more. And that really needs a big injection of money to make sure that we eliminate desperation in the poorest of the poor. That's it for Policy Monday this week. Okay, Q&A in 120 seconds. I'm going to hit it very fast because apparently my Monday night policy was very long. <laughs> so, first question, Rafizi leaves politics. You can read all about it in my uh, in my Facebook where I wrote about Rafizi leaving. Of course, we were very sad but at the same time happy that he's going to greater things, you know, and the thing about Rafizi is whatever he do or does or in the future or now, he's going to put in 110% and he's smart, he's brilliant, he's clever, he's hardworking, he's got all the right ingredients to succeed in life, so I'm not too concerned about him, you know, moving away from politics, but of course the country really needs him and this, well, important hour, right? Uh, number two, Mawafakat National Malaysia. They want to announce their Mawafakat in May 2020 and this is basically, I think it's just AMNO and, and, and PASS. I'm not sure where MIC, MCA will stand or they have May until, until May to decide. Now, I, I wish them all the best. You know, I mean, we formed Barisan Alternative, Bar Pakatan Raya, Pakatan Harapan. But I hope that even in forming that, that will try to be more uh, inclusive, bring in other race groups, uh, otherwise it might be a problem for the country. Number three, the so-called allegations of, of uh, sexual nature against Anwar, that, look, the police investigating, but even if you are like, you know, 
standard one lah. Not standard one, maybe form six or whatever interest and policy. If you read the, the sequence of things, it just makes no sense. Why one year later when you file a complaint? Why you continue to work for ANWA for a year? Why did you, uh, you know, file it on 19 November, but then use it, release it just before, two weeks later, release it just before the Congress. All this smells of a serious plot or something, but we leave it to the police to decide. Oh, Sang Suu Kyi, ICC. Uh, he, she says it's not genocide. You read it yourself, it's shameful. UK elections, very last, we've got three minutes, uh, three seconds left. UK election, I think Boris Johnson is going to win, but he's going to face a lot of problems forming a coalition government, you know, because it's anti Brexit. That's it for QA this week. Hello everybody, Marcus here. Uh, unfortunately, the time has come to say goodbye. It's now the end of my internship. Um, it's been a thoroughly enjoyable few couple of months uh, and the range of experiences I've had uh, working as an intern here with uh, YB Wong Chen have been great. Uh, they've ranged from doing policy research to helping our constituents to going to parliament. It's been deeply, deeply fascinating and uh, it's been, it's going to be very hard to say goodbye to everyone because I've had a great time here at the office as well, got to know a lot of people, become good friends with everyone here. So I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone. Uh, I'm eager to see uh, what's going to happen to them in the future as well as uh, the office and Malaysia. I have high hopes for the country and I just hope that uh, the things work out and uh, that reform comes and the country becomes uh, uh, an even better place. So I'm going to say bye for now, uh, but not goodbye forever.